in a segment that is a long time coming. Mm -hmm. We actually, so a little bit of background on how this segment came to be. Two weeks ago, we were taping the show um, and we got into a debate. I don't know if we were talking about a story related to this topic or I don't know how it came up in our in our discussion. It was, yeah, it, was I was talking about weird Snapchat things that I watched. Okay, so it was nothing to do with the show. No. We were just chatting um, and we came upon the topic of plastic surgery. And it turns out that Tamara and I have some strong opinions about plastic surgery, probably a little bit different from each other. And two weeks ago, we prepared ourselves to talk about it. We sat down in front of the camera and about <laughs> a minute and 30 seconds into the segment, the camera broke. Yes. And we had to send it to get it fixed. That's why there was no video show last week. We only did a podcast. And now that the camera's back, it's only right that as we wrap up this show, we resume this conversation. Hopefully, it's not so provocative that it breaks this camera. Too. <laughs> Thank God. Because that is within the pray. realm of possibility. Okay, so where do we want to begin, Tamara? Would you like to start with your baseline opinions on plastic surgery? Okay, so how about we begin where we initially started? Okay. So I don't know how many of you guys are aware, but there is a Snapchat that's called Dr. Miami. Mm. So Dr. Miami is a plastic surgeon in Miami that specializes in Brazilian butt lifts and breast implants. Um, as most things are <laughs> in Miami, they're bigger than usual. What is the difference between a Brazilian butt lift and a regular butt lift? Uh, I don't know if there's such thing as a regular, I guess a regular All butt, butt lifts are Brazilian. Yeah, I would guess a regular butt lift would just be lifting your butt up, but Brazilian is taking fat via liposuction from the rest of your body and putting it into your butt <laughs> to make it bigger, <laughs> like much bigger, your, 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 your butt and your hips and everything. Mm. So... Mm. It's like a two for one deal. So all they do all day, <laughs> so he has he has um, assistants that work for him that just Snapchat. That's all they do. So they hold the camera while he does all of these surgeries after the people that are getting the surgeries done sign waivers and go along with all of these things. And he talks the viewers through it. I think he has one of the biggest Snapchats right now. Um, Lots of people watch it, which I think is surprising because it's completely uncensored. Um, so it's literally just like people getting under the knife. Exactly. But even, graphically. and I think, ooh, ooh. so the reason we initially started talking about this was because I feel very uncensored, or uh, what is the word I'm looking for, desensitized to seeing these procedures done. Um, there are shows like Botched, I'm sure you've heard of on E! that yeah. is plastic surgery that. too. It's fixing people that have had previous problems with surgery or plastic surgery. And so they show less on Botch than they do on Snapchat because they have other rules to go by since they're on television. But um, I think I'm much more comfortable with plastic surgery as a person because I see people get it done every day pretty much on Snapchat, on the TV, on lots of different sources. Um, so that's where we initially started the okay. conversation. That's where we started. And you were like, I don't agree with surgery at all. And I was like, I do. And so I want to hear what your opinion is okay. on Here. this. I've st I tell people this all the time. Okay. okay. So here's the problem with plastic surgery. It's a big problem. One to two to three to four surgeries, you may look better than you did before. Okay. My biggest problem with plastic surgery, and we see this time and time again, we see it with celebrities, we see it with regular people. Once you have a good plastic surgery, let's say like you just get some Botox or like maybe, I don't know, a nose job. I mean, I don't, I don't, nose jobs aren't even like, I feel like the vast majority of nose jobs I've seen are unsuccessful. Yeah. I consider them to be weird. Okay. Um, my point is, everyone I know personally that's had plastic surgery, you see the celebrities that get it, they get a good one, and then they think plastic surgery is an option, right? And here's the thing. Even a celebrity, like here's an example of someone who has had good plastic surgery done. Uh, Heidi Klum. She looks good now, but there's no doubt that she has had plastic surgery. Yeah. There's no way at her age she would look like she did without plastic surgery. Okay. Here's the problem. Everyone goes one step too far. There's always going to be one surgery too many where you go over the point and then you look like someone with plastic surgery. And once okay. you get to that point and you see it over and over again, especially with the, the famous ladies up in their 70s and their 60s, 
at a certain point with plastic surgery, no matter what you do, you start to look deformed and not human, right? And I have not seen anyone who's like, oh, I'll just get a touch of Botox. Because right now, celebrities are getting Botox in their 30s, right? Mm, and when you're when setting they're 18. The, oh, yeah. When you're setting the bar <laughs> at 18, by yeah. the time you're 30 or 40, there is no doubt that you're going to be in that range where you start to not look like a human being. And once you start to realize, oh my God, I've done too much plastic surgery, then you're like, okay, I just need to get more so I can fix it and go back to how I was before. And then it gets worse and then you're just screwed up. That's gonna happen to, if you get plastic surgery, I promise you, it's only a matter of time. You might even feel like you got like a little Botox when you were 30. It might take you another 20 years before you feel like you need it again. But the bottom line is, you're never going to end up in better shape in the long run by getting plastic surgery. That's okay. my point. So, I feel very strongly about it because it's just that's just what's going to happen. I think that one you of... You can't just have one. I think that one of the big things in this line is I think there are lots of people that look like an alien to you that like the way they look. And I think that, that's the problem. That <laughs> I think... I mean, I don't know the answer It's your personal that, right? decision. And I think... Sure. If you are, I think the main reason people do get plastic surgery is because they have a big problem with themselves. And it may be a physical problem, it may be an emotional problem, but no matter what, they're trying to fix this problem and get to a place that they feel better. And sometimes plastic surgery does help people face those problems in maybe not the healthiest way in your <laughs> opinion or in most people's opinion, but I do think it does help people out in a lot of situations, not all situations and probably not the majority, but <laughs> I think that it makes sense for people to do it. But at the same time, like, yeah, maybe they look like an alien to you, but I think not everyone hates their plastic surgery after they get it done or hates themselves after they've had a million. Like, I know Madonna loves herself and honestly probably thinks she's the best she's looked in a long time, and she looks like an alien to me and to you, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course the person who's getting the plastic surgery might not feel that but way. Isn't but isn't that the only person that matters? Is it? If they're paying for it and, and they're happy, that's the only person that matters. And... I think that's important I mean, the to keep idea, in mind. I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, the idea that, like, people get plastic surgery just for themselves is not true. Like, yeah. you can make that argument that it is, but the bottom line is everyone is doing, like, when we wear nice clothes or we put on makeup or we do our hair or we get plastic surgery, you can say, oh, I'm just doing it for me. I'm just doing it for me to feel good. The bottom line is you're not. Like, as much as you think you are, if there weren't the pressures from society and your peers and coworkers to dress and act a certain way and look young and feel young, you wouldn't be doing these things. Yeah, but maybe at the same time, people just want a general reaction, someone to pay attention to them. And if it's negative or positive, it doesn't really make a difference. As long as they get the reaction, then they're happy. Sure. And, and listen, I don't think there's like a cut and dry, and I don't think I'm 100% yeah. right. But that's generally how I feel about it. And I think like if I could make the point that like if you're considering doing it, from what I've seen, and I haven't talked to every person who's gotten plastic surgery, but it appears to be a slippery slope to me. That's I, all I'm saying. I think a main another thing that scares me is because people in my generation are gonna be very desensitized to plastic surgery as a thing, and I think it's already happening, is that it will be- And then maybe the alien faces will be normal. No, it will be a, more of a thing for people to just get sketchy plastic surgery because oh, plastic yeah. surgery is expensive. It's not something you just go into a dark alley and then get cement put into your face, which happens to lots and lots of people. Mm. Um, so I think that is actually super worrisome and I hope people watch shows like Botch where they explain these really horrible things that go on like women being women or men being put on tables in Mexico with ice on their body and then cut open like after just being numbed a little bit. <laughs> So, oh God, like, this is a that. real thing that goes on in other parts of the world and even in America and lots of places that are not actual practices. So, I think if you do decide to get plastic surgery, you definitely need to do your research. Um, you need to find a doctor that works for you and is understanding of what you want exactly. And you need to be willing to spend a lot of money on it because yeah. if you don't, there's... Uh, the likelihood of it actually turning out the way you wanted to is very slim. Yeah, you might be. Uh, it might be on your first plastic surgery that you look like a freak yeah. instead of your tenth. And I think something that's also really important is even on the Snapchat, which as mundane and stupid as it might be, um, they are starting to show people after the fact, and most people don't want to show their faces. But after <laughs> you look like you got 
Pira. When you get out of having a Brazilian butt lift, your body is in the worst shape that it's ever been in. You are black and blue, yep. you are weirdly lumpy, and you are swollen everywhere, so you could be two or three times the size you were before you went in. It takes about six months to a year for your body to get down to the shape it was when you initially had all of the fat sucked out of you. So, um, if you're willing to put it in a year of time to change your body in that way for the positive, then I don't understand why you can't put in a year of time of really un stupid, annoying dieting and exercise, as horrible as it might seem, you'll probably even spend less for a trainer or nutritionist yeah. if that's the direction you want to go. Well, I'm going to give Tamara the last word on that one. Let us know what you think in the comments below, folks. I think it's a pretty controversial topic. We'll be back after this. Don't go anywhere.